I'm Eli Mukhtar. Uh, I'm a research fellow here at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm Maury Gertz, Chair of the Department of Medicine. I've been a consultant in hematology at Mayo Clinic Rochester for 34 years. I'm going to present an article titled Systemic Immunoglobulin Lichen Amyloidosis Associated Myopathy Presentation, Diagnostic Pitfalls and Outcome which will appear in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Dr. Mukhtar, what was the key finding of your study? So the main findings of this uh, study can be clustered into three subheadings, presentation, diagnostic pitfalls, and outcome. As for presentation, the main presenting symptoms were muscle weakness, myalgia, muscle atrophy, and pse or pseudo-hypertrophy. The median time between symptom onset and diagnosis was almost two years, so just by itself a diagnosis delay. Why do you think there was a delay in diagnosis? Failure to recognize amyloidosis in the differential diagnosis of myopathy is probably a leading cause for a delay in the diagnosis. Over 50% of patients had a muscle biopsy before arriving at the Mayo. 60% of them had an established diagnosis of amyloidosis-associated myopathy. However, 40% of these patients had either incorrect diagnosis such as inflammatory myositis or simply a nonspecific diagnosis. When we reviewed those slides from these patients, a congruent deposition was seen in the muscle tissue, proving that failure to recognize amyloidosis in the differential diagnosis of myopathy led to a further delay in diagnosis. So if I see a patient with myopathy, what testing should I be doing to make this diagnosis more likely? So we recommend that all patients undergoing evaluation for myopathic disorder should be screened for monoclonal protein using serum and urine, electrophoresis and immunofixation, as well as serum free light chain assay. The diagnostic delay, is it important? Uh, don't all patients with amyloid do poorly? Whenever you're ready. Okay. We are about to discuss an article titled Systemic Immunoglobulin Lichen Amyloidosis Associated Myopathy Presentation, Diagnostic Pitfalls and Outcome which will appear in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Early recognition is a prerequisite for improvement in outcome as delaying diagnosis often results in advanced disease that is by itself a negative predictor for outcome and also preclude patients from receiving autologous stem cell transplant. Why is it important to receive an autologous stem cell transplant? So if we look at patients, we see that patients that received either standard chemotherapy or not treated whole had a poor outcome, while patients receiving autologous stem cell transplant had a median of survival that is not reached. How much better do patients do with autologous stem cell transplant? What was the median survival of traditionally treated patients? Patients treated with autologous stem cell transplant had a median survival not reach. Compared to that, patients treated with standard chemotherapy had a median overall survival of less than two years, while patients not treated at all had only several months of survival. When I see a patient with myopathy, I'll do a creatine kinase blood level. If the true creatine kinase blood level is normal, I'll stop the evaluation. I assume they do not have a myopathy. So we look at that point and we have uh, found that patients have inconsistent elevations in their plasma creatine kinase. Actually, only a third of patients had elevations in the level of these enzymes uh, at presentation. I've also seen textbook pictures where the patients with muscle involvement have obvious enlargement of their muscles and I use that as a clue if they don't have that, I assume they don't have muscle involvement. So presentation can be uh, varied from patient to patient. Patient can present with either atrophy of the muscles or pseudo but neither the presence of these uh, signs should preclude the diagnosis of muscle amyloidosis. Why do patients with muscle amyloidosis die? The main cause of death of these patients is cardiac involvement, which was very common among these patients. 60% 60, 60 of them had uh, evidence for cardiac involvement. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. 
Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.